Yaskawa. <laughs> this video shows how to read and write parameters in DriveWizard Industrial. We are also going to cover how to share and export these parameters. Let's start out by first explaining the differences between going online with the drive and working offline. If you are currently connected to a drive and you would like to read parameters, then you will want to click the connect to drive slash go online button. If you are not connected to a drive, you are going to get a communication error if you click this button. A nice feature in Drive Wizard though is that you can just click the select drive and work offline button. The purpose of this button is so that you can make project files and configure all of the parameters for a drive right at your desk without physically connecting to it. An important item to note is that you will want to select the proper drive series, software version, and model number from the drop down menus. These selections should match the drive that you plan on eventually writing the parameters to. Alternatively, if we are connected to a drive, the online mode will automatically determine which drive you are connected to. Select which connection method you are using and proceed to click the Go Online button. After a few status bars rush in front of you, a window will pop up asking you what you want to do. Click the View slash Edit Drive Parameters icon. This icon is a shortcut that's going to take us to the parameter list. If you haven't noticed already, drives tend to have a lot of parameters. So to find out what you are looking for quickly, here's some pointers. To the left of the parameter list, there is a pane which categorizes the parameters into groups. If you click on the C tuning, for example, only the C parameters will be listed on the parameter list. You can break it down even further by clicking the little arrow to the left of the C to list the subgroups. If we just care about XL and D-cell parameters, for example, we can just click on the group and now our parameter list is much more manageable and easier to read. Another method to find what you are looking for quickly is to simply search it. On the bottom of the parameter list is an active search box. Just type in the parameter description you are looking for and the parameter list will then dwindle down in size to match your search criteria. To change a parameter, just double click it. This will bring up a window listing the parameter description, the setting, and also the allowable range. Either type or select the desired value you want, and then select Write to Drive and Save Working Value. A quick status bar is going to pop up that's going to say it's writing and the window will then close. You also have the ability to change a parameter back to the factory default value by clicking on the default icon. This method of changing a single parameter at a time is often favorable because it is faster due to less messages being sent to the drive. If a parameter is different from the factory default, then that setting is going to become highlighted in red. To look at all of the parameters that have been modified, use the Modified Parameters tree on the left window pane. If you want to clear out the whole drive and start from scratch, the best way to do that is select the Restore to Default function, which is under the Edit tab. If you ever want to initialize for 3-wire, for example, then you're going to use the initialize drive function. Here you could select two wire or three wire. If you select 3330, that'll initialize you to three wire control. And you will lose all of your programming, so be careful with these two functions. If an entire project file was set up in the offline mode, it can be written by opening the project file. And then writing the project file to the connected drive. Be aware that when writing entire project files to a drive that there are KVA dependencies, meaning that the drive you plan on writing the parameters to must be the same size of the drive that was selected when the project file was first created. In addition to understanding the importance of drive capacities and KVA dependencies, there is also something to note about changing control methods. When you change your control method, like V by F versus open loop or closed loop vector, you will get a pop-up message explaining that since the control method is being changed, there are a handful of other parameters that will change with it. This will usually include parameters like torque compensation, volts per hertz patterns, and also various gains. Once you click accept, the control method changes along with those additional parameters which were listed.
DryWizard Industrial also has a compare function. The compare function will check to see if the parameters in DryWizard Industrial, also called the working values, match the current drive settings. After running a compare, you will get either a pop-up window explaining that everything matches, or if the parameters do not match, then they will be highlighted in yellow. To sync drivers and industrial with the drive, just click read parameters. Once you click this, all of that yellow will disappear because the working values now match the drive settings. Notice that at the top of the parameter list, there is an export tab and also an email tab. The export tab will allow you to export your parameters into a number of different formats. This includes PDF files, Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, or even images. Also, with that email tab, you could email parameters directly from Drivers and Industrial to coworkers, colleagues, or even tech support. If you create an email and send it to tech support, you'll want to send them the modified constants list instead of the entire parameter list. Also, you'll want to be sure to include the fault trace, which we're going to talk about next, and also be ready to give them the drive serial number. If you need support, send all of that information to drive support at yaskawa.com. And of course, you'll need a working internet connection to send off that email.